for me, the decision really was made a long, long time ago, many decades ago, of how my life was really going to look. And by and large, that's how it's turned out. You know, in um, Greek tragedy, there's an idea that character is destiny. Okay, character is destiny. In other words, the, the character's essential attributes or traits or indeed flaws lead to his eventual, wherever, wherever he ends up, his eventual downfall or his eventual success, okay? Um, there was this idea in Greek tragedy about the fatal flaw in the character. And that fatal flaw, if it was, say, jealousy or obsession or lust or anger or whatever it was, that fatal flaw would ultimately lead to the character's downfall, okay? Um, and I think that there's something in that. I think that there's certain elemental things about us as human beings that dictate the path that we take, that dictate where we end up in life, okay? And that can be for good or for bad. For myself, I've ended up right now, on the 15th of March or whatever the date is, I've ended up pretty much where I always would have expected I would have ended up. I don't mean geographically, I just mean in terms of, you know, the situation that I'm in. And it's not that, you know, I haven't deviated from that path, you know, it's not that I haven't had long-term relationships, it's not that I haven't lived with women and certainly gone in a direction where it's looked as though it was probably going to go towards you know, a more conventional sort of marriage and whatever set up. But something always got in the way of, of that going to its conclusion. Usually me. <laughs> Usually me messing it up, okay? Um, and it's not that every time I've come out of a relationship, I've whooped and hollered and punched the air with glee because now I'm back to, you know, back to myself and back to my independence again. Far from it, far from it. Coming out of relationships can be incredibly painful and incredibly difficult and incredibly emotionally challenging for me as an individual. But ultimately, why did that happen? Why did, why did I push that, those relationships in that way? Or why did I create those flaws in the relationship that, that ended up with me being on my own at the end of it? Well, ultimately, and there is, a, there is a school of thought that says if you look at a person, if you look at a person and where they are in life, that represents really where they wanted to be on some elemental level, on some fundamental level, if that makes sense. And as I say, I think for me, where I've ended up about now, it's probably about how I kind of always wanted it, really. And it's not that there aren't trade-offs, because obviously there are trade-offs, right? I mean, no form of life, no form of lifestyle, rather, is going to be free from compromise and free from downsides. You know, every decision you make, in some way, you're going to regret it. Because there's always going to be something that you could have done that you chose not to do. And then you start to think, oh, what would have happened if I had done that? So if you get married and you have a couple of kids and you move to, to a nice house somewhere in the country or whatever, there's always going to be that part of you that thinks, yeah, but what if I, what if I bought that motorcycle and I'd ridden around South America on it, you know, and I hadn't done any of this domestic stuff, what then? And if you buy the motorcycle and you drive around South America on it and you forego the marriage and the kids... There's always going to be that part of you that thinks, oh, but what if I hadn't have done this motorcycle thing and I'd have got married to Sheila at college and we would have had those kids and it would have been so beautiful and lovely. So whatever you do, there's going to be an element of regret. There's going to be an element of sadness. And do I have sadness in my life? Yeah, absolutely. But is that sadness less than what I would be experiencing if I'd have taken another route. I don't think so, no, because I know fundamentally the way that I'm built. And the way that I'm built is I'm pretty avoidant, naturally, in relationships. I really, really, really like my own space. 
I really like my own company. I'm quite introverted, so I don't like people around me too much. You know, it's fine. I can hang out with people. I can have a laugh with people. You know, I can spend extended periods of time with people. But in the end, I want to be able to pull away and do my own thing. And there's something else as well. The key thing for me, really, that's been important all my life has been writing. Okay? And writing is a pastime or an occupation that requires extended periods of concentration and focus on your own, pretty much. I mean, yes, you can have somebody else living in the house. You could have somebody in the next room doing whatever they're doing. But people, and believe me, because I speak from experience here, people get fed up with that after a while because not everyone's like me. Most people that I've dated, they're actually pretty social. They're pretty normal kind of people. And they want you to be around. They want you to, you know, they want to do stuff with you. They want to hang out. And when all you want to do is shut the door and sit down at the laptop and get on with the work, that doesn't really sit very well uh, with a conventional type relationship. 